Hello everyone, Lawrence here with the Anydays AI Crystal Tower. This case has three tempered glass side panels, so hold on to your Windex, grab that microfiber cloth, because we're going to do a review of it. So I already said this case has three tempered glass side panels. You get one on the front, one on each side, and they're actually really thick at five millimeters. That's way more than what Inwin, for example, offers. Also, what's fun and different is that unlike, let's say again, Inwin cases, there's actually a lot of intake. So the entire front of the case has these slots, a bit like fractal cases, so the front fans can breathe. Now, the glass has a really dark, slightly green tint to it. I don't really know if I'm into that stuff, but maybe you guys are, but you will have to put a lot of light in this case in order to make your hardware really shine. As you can see, the case is actually pretty big. So it will fit ATX, but it will also fit EATX motherboards and even longer uh, dual CPU motherboards if you remove the little plastic cover. More about that later. It has the power supply mounted in the bottom instead of the top with my previous case, so that's also a welcome change. And it actually has some really tall feet, so if you put it on carpet, there's still some room for the dust filter to go underneath and for your power supply to actually breathe. Front I.O. is really good. There are two USB 3.0 headers and then two USB 2.0 headers. There's a power button, a reset button with the hard drive activity light built in. And then there's a fan controller, which looks like a tree setting fan control, but it's actually just... Uh, 7 volts, 12 volts, and the middle setting will turn the fans off completely for ultimate silence. I would like to see a Type-C port here, but most people still aren't using that, so it's okay, I guess. So I already mentioned the power supply has a dust filter, but there are also magnetic dust filters on the front and on the top of the case. Looking at the rear of the case, you can see 7 PCIe slots and a central bottom-mounted power supply. I would like to see it moved over all the way to the right for even more cable management room, but it is a pretty okay implementation. Also, as you can see on top of the motherboard, there's like five centimeters there for radiators and fans. Talking about fans, every single fan mount is slotted. So you can slide around your fans or if you have radiators with weird spacing, that will also not be an issue. You can put an insane amount of radiators in this case. Let's start with the rear. So you can put a 120 or a 140 here. In the top, you can put up to a 360 millimeter radiator, but you can also go with a 280 like I have right here with the ID Cooling Frost Flow Plus. It gets even more interesting at the front though, because there you can put triple 140 fans, but any days doesn't actually mention you can put a 420 millimeter radiator in there because there might be a little bit of um, room issues with the end tanks on those. However, there are no real cable struggles from the front IO here. So maybe you can put a 420 in there if you really want to, but 360 millimeter front radiators will fit no problem. You can also make them quite thick, but you will have to make sure that you can still get it in there because the basement is not removable. And so if you go with a 360, it might actually touch when you try and slide it in there. So as I said, this case has a basement to mount your power supply and the hard drives into. It's a really long basement. Maybe I wish they would have made it a little bit shorter so you can go with thicker front radiators. Right now, I think 30 millimeters is about as thick as you want to go because again, you have to get a fan in there as well. So while the central mounted fans make total sense in the front of the case, it's a different story up top. You see the 120s and the 140s are spaced out from the center of the case. And that might become an issue if you go with really thick radiators. You have about six centimeters here, so that's a 30 millimeter thick radiator and the fan on there, no problem. But if you wanna go push-pull, for example, you might get interference issues um, or clearance issues with VRM heat sinks or your memory modules. So I really wish any days would have just slided the entire assembly over to the right, like Fantex, for example, does, so you can get really thick radiators in there. Now, the entire case is powder coated in a lovely matte black color, but sadly, all the non-gloss panels are made from a really thin steel. And I would have liked them to go with slightly thicker steel. It's also a comment I had with the AI Crystal Cube. It flexes a little bit too much for my liking. It's okay when there's hardware in there, but during the construction process, it kind of feels a bit cheap almost. Back to the basement. In a way, it's awesome because there's a massive grommet in there for your GPU power cables. But sadly, there's only a tiny little cutout for your HD audio connector at the rear. So 
mounting front panel IO for example or a USB 2 header or whatever header is mounted at the bottom might become a little bit of an issue because there's no real way to route those cables away quickly. There's also not a lot of room between the motherboard and the basement so you can't just loop it around the motherboard. So yeah, please any days put some extra slots in that basement for those cables. I said earlier this case supports like even longer than EATX motherboards but as a result you get a bit of a dwarfing effect of the case like this is an ATX motherboard in here and I think it looks a little bit too small if you don't put something like a, uh, a tube reservoir in there or an EATX motherboard. Above your motherboard there are also a lot of cutouts so a pin power or fan headers or just the fans from your radiator up top for example. Now talking about cable management Anydays includes this little plastic cover. I think NZXT first did it uh, and this basically is there to cover up the grommets so it's just I guess cheaper than putting a rubber grommet in there and also a bit cleaner looking. It will look awesome if you have angle 24 pin and a USB 3 header on your motherboard but not a lot of motherboards actually have that anymore. If you want to put really long motherboards in here however you will have to remove that little plastic cover. Now something this case lacks which a lot of tempered glass cases have is a main chamber SSD mount. Instead all the SSD mounts, all three of them are at the back of the motherboard. You simply mount them to a cage and drop them in. It's super easy to do but you know if you really want to show it off it might be handy to just double sided tape it into the main chamber. There are also dual hard drive caddies, they're just simple metal caddies. You slide them in, thumb screw, lock them in place, done. Moving to the back of the motherboard tray, it's a bit of a mixed bag for me. You see there are a lot of cable management uh, zip tie hoops. The stock factory cable management is done really well. They also use some velcro straps to save on zip ties but you get an awful lot of zip ties in the accessory box. So that's all lovely. However, there is very limited room for cable management, only let's say between a centimeter and half a centimeter, especially on the motherboard tray itself, that can be a little bit problematic. I, for example, wanted to run cable extenders and just the connector of an 8-pin was too thick to mount behind the motherboard tray, so I actually had to modify my connectors. Another issue because of this very limited uh, room behind the motherboard tray is my fan setup. So as you can see I got the AI prismatic fans in here but the controller box is actually thicker than the room there is for the side panel to close. So it actually touches the side panel and there's like a one millimeter gap between the side panel and the case. Not exactly ideal with tempered glass panels. Now I could mount it to the front but then the rear cable wouldn't reach and if I mount it in the bottom well I already used up all the space with stashing cables in there. So yeah you might want to make sure you have really uh, thin cables and you want to do stuff properly with this case. Now that said though I think my cable management job looks very good for the amount of effort that I put in and if you go with custom sleeved cables it's going to look super tidy but you will have to put a lot of effort in because again the back panel is also tempered gloss and you can see through it. Cooling is actually pretty good because there are a lot of slots in the front for the fans to breathe through it's not very obstructive at all this gloss front panel which is a welcome change from other cases. It also does a pretty decent job at keeping the noise inside of the case so your fan noise won't leak all over the place. So I'm pretty happy with cooling and noise performance. But while it is awesome that all the intakes are filtered, the filters are quite restrictive and they do create a lot of turbulent air noise. So you may not want to run the filters. They also block out a lot of light, especially at the front of this case. You can really see the mesh from that dust filter. So for a conclusion then, I think the Anydays AI Crystal Tower is great value for money. It's very well built. It's easy to work in and it does an okay job of cable management, but it really could use a little bit more room behind that motherboard tray. If you really like the tempered glass aesthetic though, I think it's almost a no-brainer, although personally I like the cube case a little bit more because it was a bit easier to work in cable management wise. Something I love is that this is the light version and you can basically buy the case without fans. So if you already have fans, you don't have to waste money on factory fans. And then you can just get it with whatever fans you want, be it um, the Anydays AI Halo fans, the AI Prismatic fans, or the AI RGB fans, whatever. You can get it without fans or with the fans of your choice. And that's awesome for the budget-oriented buyer. So guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. If you didn't, hit the subscribe button for when I make a video that you do like. If you want more frequent updates, you can follow me on Instagram and on Twitter for Twitter is basically raging on a bunch of stuff. Instagram is beautiful pictures of computer bits. 
Now, as you can see, I got a pretty good light setup already, thanks to the awesome people on your screen. And the next upgrade will be my audio quality. So if you want to help out with that, there is a Patreon link in the description below. For now though, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.